I'm often asked about um, the way people are trained to think and you know, what we have to reflect upon is that most of us have been through an industrial age education system. And the industrial age education system was really to develop people uh, for an industrial economy. So the focus was really around efficiency in thinking, not diversity of thinking. So we were taught to think in a very formulaic, a very linear way. So in today's world, when we start thinking about complexity and uncertainty and ambiguity, um, that becomes a problem because actually the way that you solve many of those problems is not with this linear industrial age thinking, it's actually with more divergent or creative thinking. So, you know, the first thing we have to realize as individuals is that because of our education, uh, we tend to lose the ability to think creatively, and therefore what we have to do is try to reconnect with our creativity. So I've spoken about the, um, the challenge of this, this linear thinking or uh, convergent thinking. That's not just an issue for the way we deal with problems in the business world. It's also a problem with the way we deal with issues in our personal life. Because for most of us, you know, we've actually been on a very linear path from the time we've been a child. You know, we've been through education and often what's happened is that education has become increasingly specialised. You know, we've studied science or mathematics, and what we've then done is we've gone into quite a linear career. We've gone on to engineering or architecture or law, and in fact, what we've become is increasingly specialized. What then often happens is after our studies, we go into a career. And within a company, again, the way most careers are organized are very linear. So the problem with this actually is that often by the time we're in our late 30s, um, we've actually got to a place, and a place that a lot of people call success, which is not really a place that we want to be at all. It's just the place that we've got to because of the track that we've been on. So one of the challenges actually is that as an individual, we now need to step back uh, and, and look at our education and look at our career and think about alternative possibilities. Now, how else can we live our life? So what we have to do is also bring creativity um, into the way we think about success. I think the issue here really is, is a societal issue because in certainly most of the Western societies, success in the 20th century and I think continuing into the 21st century has been defined in quite a narrow way because actually most of the definitions of success that we think about in the West are based around job or career success. So, you know, if I was to say to you, you know, a, a very successful person is about to walk into the room, what most people would think of is a CEO or managing director, um, you know, maybe someone who's made it to the top of politics or, or even a social endeavor. But actually, it, it's very much defined around career. My belief actually is that we, we should start thinking about success very differently because my belief is that actually success um, is happiness. It's actually being satisfied with, with who we are in life. And also, very importantly, it's not about the individual. Um, it's actually about the collective. And for me, the collective is very much around that family um, and the others that we have in our life. So success is much more than career. Um, success is actually about the degree to which you've reached your potential. Um, the degree to which you built relationships with those people who are important to you, the degree to which you've actually reached those dreams or passions that you've had throughout your life. It's not what it says on your business card. There's an issue here for organisations. And one of the biggest issues when we start thinking about this wider definition of success is how to manage top talent, actually. Because what I've seen in a lot of organizations is that we think about top talent in a very special way. What we do is we put them on what's called the high potentials track. And the high potentials track is all about accelerating the individual's potential to contribute to the organization. But one of the things that I've seen over the last 15 years of interacting with businesses, international businesses, is that all too often the high potentials track actually becomes the high burnout track. You know, the track where, where people literally work themselves into unhappiness, dissatisfaction and often health problems. So what I think actually is that organisations really need to rethink the, the definition of the high performer. 
and actually accept that a high performing individual can also be someone that is not just performing at work, but is performing and achieving things in other aspects of their life. Now, what this also means, of course, is that we need to, in many ways, rethink the industrial age ideas um, about employment. I've worked with, uh, recently with Telstra, a telecom company in Australia, and what they've been doing is actually redefining many of their senior management roles as part-time. Now, the reason they've been doing that is actually to increase diversity and to bring more people into management who are often excluded from management because of those onerous work hour requirements. And what Telstra is actually discovering is that many of these people who are coming into work as managers, maybe just three days a week, are performing equally well, if not better, than many of the people who are on those five day a week work contracts. So, you know, organizations need to be more flexible in the way they think about working with talent. And organizations need to really invest in thinking about new ways of working. And if they do that, not only can the individual attain a wider definition of success, but the organization can also benefit from the energy and the passion and the focus that those people can bring.